Okay, my sermon is on Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you that there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the beginning of today's gospel reading, we hear how the Pharisees and scribes were criticizing Jesus not only for eating with sinners, but for receiving them as well. They disapproved of his eating with them informally or accepting invitations to meals in their homes, but perhaps even more so objected that he received them, meaning that he showed them hospitality. And it's possible he may even have hosted the meals. Receiving guests at the table for fellowship and sharing a meal has special significance as a sign of acceptance. The Pharisees and scribes, in their self-righteousness, would only fellowship with those they considered to be righteous. They separated themselves from any who they deemed were unrighteous. There was even a rabbinical saying that let not a man associate with sinners, even to bring them near the Torah. While sinners' actions have separated themselves from God, Jesus' actions and words show that God's outlook is different than those of the Pharisees. God's attitude is to seek out those who are lost and who are separated from him and in need of redemption and restoration. By eating with them and hosting them, Jesus showed them love and concern. Unlike the Pharisees, Jesus was willing to associate with the sinners and to bring them to salvation. He came to save sinners as we heard in the reading from 1 Timothy. To really understand what Jesus was was doing in eating with the sinners, it is important to realize that in that area, at that time, and even today, to invite someone to a meal was a great honor. It was an offer of peace, trust, brotherhood, and forgiveness. In short, sharing at a table meant sharing life. In fact, once a meal was shared, the guest was under the host's protection. In Judaism, in particular, table fellowship means fellowship before God. Eating a piece of broken bread by everyone who shares in the meal brings out the fact that they all share in the blessing which the master of the house has spoken over the unbroken bread, just like when we share the bread and wine of the Eucharist. Thus, Jesus' meals with the tax collectors and other sinners are not just social events, but they have a deeper significance. It was an expression of the ministry and message of Jesus. The inclusion of sinners in the community of salvation achieved in table fellowship is the most meaningful expression of the message of the redeeming love of God, his salvation and protection. In our text, Jesus rebuked the self-centered pharisaical attitudes by telling two parables which are simply symbolic stories in which the characters represent something else. The first parable was about a lost sheep. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? Now at that time, a shepherd normally had thirty to forty sheep in a flock. In the parable, this shepherd had a hundred sheep so many that losing one might not seem to be much of a big deal. But in spite of the fact that he had lots of sheep, he left the rest in the pasture to find it. 
in this story, it's easy to recognize that the shepherd represents Jesus and the sheep represent us, his people. The lost sheep is a sinner who has not repented, has not recognized his sin, so he's lost in the desert. Or it could represent someone who has fallen away from the flock. In this case, even though there are many faithful and safe sheep, the good shepherd does not say, eh, single sheep lost, so what? Not a problem. Besides, the wild beasts need a snack now and then. Instead, he sets out to look until he finds it. Note the word until. In some translations, the word look is rendered as search. And search implies a really dedicated attempt to locate something rather than just looking around casually. When the shepherd finds his missing charge, he doesn't just drag it back and toss it in the pen, but he carries it back on his shoulders, back to its home. He then calls all his friends to celebrate the return of the missing sheep. The second parable is similar, but uses the imagery of a lost coin, an inanimate, helpless object. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she lose one, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? The woman got a light and probably moved all the furniture to look for one coin. She had nine more, but she still tore the house apart, looking for the missing coin, rather than waiting until the next time she cleaned house. And something of note, she also lit her oil lamp. And oil was very expensive and a very valuable commodity in those days, yet she used it for look for a single coin. And when she'd found it, she called together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Now in the parable of the sheep, there was a very faint possibility that the lost sheep, depicting a sinner, might wander its way back home. But the coin, being an inanimate object, was going to stay hidden. God cares enough to come searching for us, even when we were so lost and helpless that we cannot acknowledge our sinfulness or even see a way back. Both parables mention friends who are invited and who come and rejoice. And in these parables, they represent the hosts of heaven, as mentioned in verse 10. So I tell you that there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. God's children, us, we, are that important to him. Our text says that some people mocked and maligned Jesus because he ate with those who had a bad reputation. However, as we know, Jesus' purpose was not to share in the lifestyle of the sinners, but to bring them the gospel of God. He wanted to gather the lost sheep and bring them back to his flock. All of us are in the same situation, whether we have a good reputation or a bad one. We must acknowledge and repent our sins to receive God's forgiveness. Our Lord does not say the lost sheep are not his problem. Our Lord looks for the lost sheep, the sinners who have not repented, because he does not, anyone, does not want anyone to suffer eternal death. Now these days, just about everyone is concerned with the death of all living beings by nuclear weapons, dramatic climate change, disease, alien invasion, zombies, or a myriad of other disasters. But they don't seem to be very concerned about eternal death. As believers, we know that God does not want our destruction and damnation. God does not want eternal death of anyone, but the restoration of a good relationship between us and himself, and for each of us to live together with him forever. Thus he provides a way of salvation through Jesus Christ. The time between the ascension of our Lord as described in scripture and a second coming is the time that we are given to proclaim the good news of God's grace and salvation through Jesus Christ to all nations as commanded by our Lord. Now some people may say that after 2,000 years all nations have had the opportunity to hear the word of God, but that's not the truth. There are still many parts of the world where we find people who have never heard of Jesus. In addition, there are many people who may have heard of Jesus, but don't really know the real Jesus. In addition, some may have a distorted image of what Jesus is all about. Therefore, we, his church, have the task of proclaiming the gospel to all until the Lord returns. The proclamation of the word of God includes not only the good news of salvation, but also the law of God, which condemns all as sinners. 
But because none of us can fulfill this law perfectly, the law cannot and does not save us. Only God's grace can. We're all sinners. Our heritage from Adam and Eve is a rebellious will. So we are far from God. By all rights, we deserve God's condemnation. But God does not want our condemnation. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place so that we may be saved. Every Sunday in our corporate confession, we acknowledge that we have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed, and by what we've done and by what we've left undone. And we admit that we have not loved him wholeheartedly, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We do this because if we humbly confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Only the sacrifice of Christ on the cross made God's forgiveness possible for us. The mission of the church is to proclaim the law, to call to repentance the law sheep. But we are not to say that we're better than anybody else, nor to say that we're holier than them. We want them to recognize their sins just as we do. And through the gospel, repent of their sins and accept God's grace and live with Christ forever. Every person is important in the eyes of God. Those who have not heard the good news of Jesus Christ and also those who have heard but strayed from the right path. The promise of forgiveness applies to each of us. And when we fall into sin, we can repent of our evil lives. We have to be good and faithful shepherds. As good shepherds, we Christians need to be looking for lost sheep too. Some of them may have just lost their faith. Some of them may be discouraged with life. Some have just become lax. And like God, we want to reclaim them and restore them to a good relationship with the Lord. Not to proclaim the word of God is to leave the sheep lost in the desert. Thanks be to God that his love has no limits. When we come together around the banquet table, we receive God's forgiveness and his blessing that we may continue to live as his children. Now, you may have noticed this sheep. I used it as a prop this morning. And as I'm looking at it, as I'm preaching, I see the number one on it. This is one of these Serta sheep. And I said, you know, there's a message in there too because to God, we're all the number one sheep. We're all important to him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.